Okay, so we have over here on the right of the screen a yellow bowl. That yellow bowl is next to the Hurum 400 juicer and over on the other side of the screen you'll see a blue bowl. That blue bowl is next to the Optimum 400 juicer. Next to each juicer there is four cups of finely diced celery. It's about one centimeter cubed and I'll attach a photograph also uh, with this video showing you the size of the cubes. Um, it was a whole large celery similar to this size. Uh, that's made eight cups of celery and we've split that between the two juices. We're now going to juice that um, at a gentle pace to see what occurs. So already on the Optimum 400 juicer, I'm noticing at the initial stages of juicing, the whole waste tube was full of celery fibers. And now there's kind of a section only sort of, um, three quarters of the waste tube is full. And on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side here, the waste tube is actually not filling up. I'm also seeing the exact same response on the Hurum juicer. So instead of the, feed tube, the waste tube being completely full of easily flowing celery, it's now three quarters wide of celery. actually more juice. Maybe we haven't juiced the same amount of juice. I can definitely see um, there's less waste flowing out even though we're feeding um, the same amount of celery into the juices. The waste chute is not letting as much waste flow out into the um, overflow jug. section there that's yeah it's not, not coming through. through they're pretty much acting the same mm. mistake so i think there might even be more waste coming out of the optimum 400 let's see again how much so we do have it Just to indicate, the handfuls that we're using are about this big, and we're kind of letting them come all the way through before adding any more, so definitely not overfeeding.
that's juiced four cups, so I'm actually about um, four and a half cups. And I measured them into the bowls before we began. One very large celery, it's juiced four and a half cups in each juicer. There is pulp still coming out, the juice is still running, it's not blocked. We're going to just try a few things before adding some kale to the mix. We'll keep the video running though. The biggest thing I'm noting is that the waste tube is most definitely partially blocked. You can see this um, definitely already. Um, if we just turn the juices off, Rory, and put them side by side. I'm going to move that out. This is the Hurum juice, and if I look here, it's a little bit frothy. Probably a tiny bit frothier than the juice from the Optimum juicer. Can you see what the, the measurement is on that? That's it. I just I can't read that on the um, Hurum one. It's 300, I'd say. So on in the Optimum one, there's 300, probably 325 mils. If I just hold that flat. Um, yeah, 300, just under 350 mils of celery juice. This one is... And that's right on 350 mils mm. of celery juice. So they're pretty much the same. We, you know, we give or take of the cut pieces um, of celery that we put in the bowls. Pulp-wise, if you have a look at the Optimum 400 pulp, um, you can squeeze out quite a lot more juice. It's a bit damp. Um, celery seems to always come through more damp. If this was carrots, it wouldn't be quite as juicy, but definitely you can see that there. And we've got um, about 400 mil height of the pulp um, there. Let's have a look at the Hurum one. Again, same sort of amount of juice coming out. Um, yeah, I'd say it's about the same, probably maybe a little bit less juice coming out but give or take no compare no dif big difference there of the Hurum and we've got just under 400 mils oh no it's about 400 mils away so pretty much the same um, result in both juices um we're always going to grab some kale out mm -hmm. it hasn't clogged now but we're going to leaf by leaf feed the kale into um, the juices and see how it goes um, it's only partially clogged at present. Can you turn it into another video? No. Okay. Just keep going. It's not. With the stalks? Um, we're actually, we've juiced many, many times with the stalks. Um, but today we're going to just either make it easier. You know, we've advised the customer um, not to use the stalks, I believe. So we're going to just do the small broken off pieces. And um, what we'll do is... Um, just quickly measure into the cup. So we'll start with one cup each of packed kale. So we'll take the kale, break it into small pieces. There's a cup in the drainer if you need more. Break it into small pieces and we'll pack. So I've pressed that quite firmly in, Roy, and I've got a packed cup there and they're broken into sort of salad sized pieces. And we'll start with that. This is quite fresh kale, um, it's not straight from the garden, but certainly it's not 10 years old. So just one cup? And I'd eat it as a salad, so it's fresh enough, just a cup to start if we need more. But this is normally when we make this transition where we see the clogging start to occur. Well, this is what happened yesterday, we were able to juice the celery with no challenge, um, but we did see clogging um, after the celery, but yesterday we didn't make such fine and even pieces, so this is a really clear test based on what the customers told us. Are you ready? Do we want to add it into there or? Um, actually, let's pour it out so we can see the yield as yep. well um, into the one litre container up the top there. Sorry, Sorry. I was thinking about celery pulp and whether we should empty there. So we've emptied out the um, juice and the pulp so we can just see the result of both of these um, and we'll see what happens. We'll put them down piece by piece, certainly much easier than what we've seen done. Go. 
Now with um, kale, you do need to use a tamper because it doesn't sort of fall down so much itself. Tell, even though if the machine hasn't stopped, I can tell that it's become clogged. Um, there's no more pulp coming out of the waste chute on the optimum juicer. I've barely used any of my packed cup. Um, I'm going to keep going and see what happens next, but there is no waste moving through here. Rory, what are you seeing? There's still some waste moving through actually. On the yeah, field. I'm seeing some moving through. still moving through slowly. Yeah, so on previous tests what I've done with the juicing, what I normally do um, is juice the kale and then some hard vegetable um, like carrot or apple and I usually finish off with celery, it's usually the last thing that I juice um, and I don't sort of do this quantity of celery ever. I'm going to pack another cup. They're still going. I just want to see at what point the juicer actually blocks. So just pack another cup and move the stem. That's a pack of cup there. Tiny bit of movement there with the kale pulp. I think actually it's probably a bit more packed than mine, but probably. Yeah. Is that a, a boy packed cup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't care for the dates when you make cheesecake. <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't, I don't make cheesecake. I made one cake last year. You're making them with figs. Figs? Yes. Figs. Figs cheaper? Figs way cheaper. $2.99 for one of the little round ones down the bottom there. Oh, really? Next to the cacao. What about boxes of them? Um, I don't know. I've never bought a box of figs. Box of dates. What? Mm. Okay, we're going to use up all the kale in the house, I think, here. And although we're not getting a lot of juice, it's certainly not blocking. That might be Mario, is it? So we have put two cups of kale through the juicer and um, we've got two little rather two sized pieces, that's all the kale that's come out and there's not a lot of juice which means that there is obviously a lot of uh, pulp at this point stuck in the juicer but it is still going, it's not pulp. Do you get 
very top. And there is considerably more pulp, there's still not much, but considerably more pulp coming mm. out. And it's, it's clear, there's, there's no celery. Yeah, it has cleared the celery from the waste tube and the curum. And there's definitely, and actually, can we use your camera for a photo? Um, I've put even more kale than you in. And even though the total measurements are the same, I'm ahead of Rory. And you can really clearly see from the waste shoot. There's still a lot of celery there. But on the waste chute on the Huron, the celery has been cleared. <laughs> I know, really sweet. I would love to look at that window. Can we start it's fine. I'll pop your three cups through and we'll stop the test. Oh, we may as well finish the kale off. I think one cup more each. That's all the kale is, so. Now, we note that when we did the celery, we didn't uh, use any celery leaves or the wide ends. We made one centimetre cube, so we did do what we had in form customers to do. How packed is your cup? Mine's pretty loose. Can I have something? So that's what I would consider to be a packed cup. Yeah, I'll we'll just leave that little bit left. Right, so this is a fourth cup of kale. So now four cups of celery in small dice pieces and four cups of kale. I've gone through. Finally, I'm actually starting to see some kale pushing through, and, and it hasn't blocked up. What I'm seeing here is that finally that kale is moving through and the last of the celery is just pushing out now and the whole width of the feed tube is, um, is now full again. So earlier on with the celery there, there was clearly a blockage and that blockage has moved through. to see that coming through now as a whole point. And this, the kale's really dry actually in comparison to the celery. Mm. Okay, do you want to turn that juicer off? So we've just juiced four cups of celery and four cups of kale with both of the juices. The optimum blockage over here has unclogged itself of the celery and continued to go with no challenge though I am finding the pulp is a little warm can you just see if you can get a little bit of pulp in there huh? it's the same temperature from the Hiram so there's no difference mm -hmm. in that um, I am seeing one thing over here though I just noticed at the end that if you see that that's fairly pulpy coming through into the juice they're very pulpy, but certainly we have juice. Let's have a little look at the quantities, first of all, of the pulp. Um, at the end, there has been more pulp come out through the waste shoot of the um, of the Hurum. It's slightly less pulp come out through the waste shoot of the Optimum juicer. And you can see that there's actually more celery, even though we emptied the bowl between those two ingredients. 
um, when it comes to juice quantity, there's, like, this is something I really notice actually, there's less froth, like if you have a look how much froth, mm. there's less froth on the Optimum Juices juice, always, in the, mm. the Hurum juice, which I kind of like. Mm. Um, and that isn't just when we're dif doing difficult things like this, it's, it's all the time. Um, so it's about seven it's hard to read because of the froth though. So that's a hundred. All right, let me just see. Look, that's nearly a hundred on this one, like maybe 90. And mine's like 80. Yeah, maybe 90 mils, not including the height of the froth. That's mm. sort of 90 mils of, of juice. Um, I think while we're filming, I'd really like to do it. Could you pass me a sieve in the bottom drawer over there? Yeah. And I'm going to sieve both of them, just see how much pulp actually came through on that. If we're going to test it to this extent again like I have before let's see because I certainly wouldn't usually use four cups of celery in a single juice even if I was making a few liters I'd use other ingredients mm. that's not to say that our customers don't just love celery juice I do do you like plain celery juice um not plain I add stuff to it yeah but that's right like so doing a whole celery is quite a lot Alright, there is a ton of pulp. Um, and can you just stir that celery pop juice? I don't think there was very much pulp at all in that. Mm. Oh, just a note too, I felt both of the pulps, both pulps from the Optimum 400 and the Optimum, uh, the Hurum 400, the kale pulp was almost dry. Um, and then just see, like grab a spoon and stir it and just see how, if you can lift up any pulp. The long handled teaspoon in the bottom drawer. Yeah. So I've got from the Optimum, I'd say it's a tablespoon, but the tablespoon is currently propping up the camera. So uh, I'd say it's about 25 mils to 30 mils of pulp that was in the juice that would have been quite chewy, um, leaving me with a really clear, fine juice. How much is um, that? Much. Yeah, the celery juice I noticed doesn't leave pulp, though the leafy juices do leave pulp. See that? I can't even scoop up anything with pulp in it. Or is just rinsing out the strainer so we can use the same equipment again and just do... I'm going to just dry that out actually a little bit, Laurie. Oh, I've got it. I'm going to drink it after this. There we go. So I've gone through and tested. Oh, here's that spoon again, thanks. Got a hair in my face, sorry. Should have put a hair in me. Oh yeah, look. It's a little bit left. I wish I didn't throw it in there. Can you grab me a plate, please, and then take, you'll see it's a small clump all together. Just one little teaspoon shaped clump. And if you grab a white plate, can you have a pop it on there? So it's actually harder for me to strain this out because there's a lot less to press on, to press through the strainer. So I haven't been able to dry out this bit of pulp as much the Optimum 400, but certainly what was in the juice through the sink, Lori. Yeah. Try not to drip on the floor. Thank you. Um, so that's the pulp that was in the juice of the Optimum 400, and this was the pulp, and although still a little wet because I can't really strain it, um, that, that was the pulp that was, can you see that in the camera? Um, between the two, so Yep. Here in 400, up to 400 pulp, and then we've got the juice, and, and now we're left with less juice, definitely, um, here in the optimum juice. So I'm just going to put all this in together. Rory and I are drinking cow juice for the rest of the day. Okay, is there anything else you feel like we need to test based on all that? No, those were the main things we, we juiced yesterday. Yeah, and we didn't have any problems. So the only difference between yesterday and today was that we didn't take the stalk off the celery, off this kale, mm -hmm. and we didn't chop the small pieces. Um, they were 
five centimetre lengths, mm. about the width of the stalk of celery or yep. just less. Um, there, I am actually going to turn the video off now, um, not bore you anymore, but we will just continue to use the juicer because um, that's not a very nice tasting juicer on its own. And see, we we'll use both juices with some, I'll actually just keep it running. I'll stop yep. it and we'll do another video and okay. I'll chop them.